Free Lunch Comic News back after a hiatus for New York City Comic Con. We are here and we're back. Tim's with back all too. All your stuff and information you're going to need. Tim's here to get you through the comic book world that is comic books. Yes. <laughs> that made sense. Yes, it was awesome. Sense. It was a beautiful thing. So how's everyone doing? Everyone uh, revised, revived and uh, recuperated from New York City Comic Con. I know, Matt, you went to uh, NYCC. It was a crazy week. Uh, we have the New York Comic Con and then we have the 24-hour comic challenge right after that. Oof. That's a tough couple days. Tough couple days. Tim participated in his first 24-hour challenge. I did. Yeah, I saw your uh, pre-24-hour uh, Facebook Live. We were telling people tips and things about oh, to do right, for Oh, right, yeah. Uh, I was like, I don't even remember. Yeah, those couple, those four days are like a blur. But yeah, I try to give as many uh, tips as possible before going yeah. into that. Uh, My tip was not to in, not get involved in it's sleep. Fu- it's fun, but it's difficult. Yes. I don't know if I'd be able to. I wouldn't be able to sit for 24 hours. It was weird. I'm this, too old for that. This, 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 the strangest thing that happened as this the kids year. Would, as, as the kids would say. We had people quitting at like four or five in the morning, but they wouldn't leave. That's tough. That's tough. Because then you like, have idle hands. You got people like not working on the on the, on no, the project you, itself. Oh, is it all one book? Like one? No, big thing? they're doing their own. Oh. Everybody does their own. So. So what do you do with like? Why would you do all that work and just stop? Yeah. Uh, the, I would say the window from like three till six is probably the hardest part of the yeah, entire for the challenge. Yeah, sun's coming up and all that. Yeah. yeah you're really. Yeah, you're 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 transitioning really... from being in that like, hey, it's nighttime. I'm enjoying it. I'm up all night, and then like, oh, the sun's coming up. Well, once the sun comes up, I've you, been up for you, a long you, time. That's the, actually the, a, a pretty easy part. Once yeah, the sun comes. Once up. the yeah. sun comes back up, you're kind of back in. Well, once it comes back up, I'm saying, but that transition from darkness <coughs> to light again. But once it's it's really tough. Once it's been dark for a long time mm. is when you're like, oh my God, I hate this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. It's all the planning. You know, the more you plan, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. But I did get a lot of shows in. Like I watched a bunch of shows that I've been meaning to watch for a long time. Oh, you didn't actually do a book. You just watched. No, I oh, did. You worked on a book. I oh. worked constantly, but I was also watching stuff on that. Yeah. See, I, I would finished be able the to first that. season of Atlanta. It was, it was good. Just checking. See, if I were to do something like that, I wouldn't be able to watch anything. No, yeah. you, you're more listening to anything. Yeah. Yeah. You're not really yeah, yeah. watching anything. Yeah, I couldn't watch anything that actually needed like attention. Yeah, you don't want anything you need to look at. Yeah, to yeah. If you want to succeed, you're not. You don't want to be looking at any screens. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that was great. A little recap of. Oh yeah, just a quick hour. little recap. Yep. Uh, how many people are actually involved, and when is that uh, coming out? The 24-hour book. My 24-hour book is going to be done by no- uh, for the November Cliff mm. Show. Oh, I'm still waiting on the uh, five-hour one. Um, That'll come out in January. Is it really coming out? Because we're doing it again. We're going to do oh. it again, and we're going to release the book. Oh. Yep. I'm excited. Yeah, My me first too. published book. Yes. But, I uh, love doing that. Yeah, so November, big plans for the November uh, Plainville show. No, well, I'll be there, so it'll be fun. Good, good. And maybe this year we'll actually be able to do the actual video thing we wanted to do last year. I wasn't able to because I actually had to be a part of it. Oh, for January, you mean? For the five-hour thing. Oh yeah. yeah, for the shuffle, the next year's shuffle. Yeah. Maybe we'll start raking people for the for the next competition. And yeah. Then that'll alleviate any pressure from you. Yes, because I couldn't actually do both. No. Who else jumped in? I think Shay jumped in too to save me. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but she did great. Both of you guys did great. Yeah. Thanks. I got I got second. Chris lost. Oh wow. And there goes our viewer. He just left. <laughs> <laughs> The damn dragons, Chris. The damn dragons. All right, so we're gonna take a quick yes, break. We'll take a quick break. We'll, and back we'll with come back with our picks. The comic news. Our picks for. Uh, no, comic news first. We're, oh, the comic news, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, it's been yeah. so long, but I forgot how long how the it's, show goes. I forgot yesterday, so. It's yeah. Fine. Well, there you go. Anyways, it's the free lunch, comic news. Woo! Back in just a bit. Come to the Terrafil Mill in Simsbury, Connecticut for the Monday Night Jam. Monday Night Jams are creative outlets for all ages. Kids from 7 to 13 come to the free lunch studios at Terrafil Mill from 5 to 6. Adults, 6 to 8.30. Come in, network, work with fellow talents, write, or just talk. 
Free Lunch Studios, Terrafil, Connecticut. Free Lunch Comic News back after that thrilling uh, promo for the Monday Night Jam. Yeah, my favorite over at the night Free Lunch of the studios. week. It's like saying you have a favorite child, isn't it? I know, it is yeah, tough. That's you. a lie. I love yeah. all the nights. Yeah. It's true. You have a lot of stuff going on over there at the Freelance Studios. It's but true. But now it's time for the comic news, where we tell you everything you need to know going on in the comic world. Hit it. Take it away, Matthew. Well, I'm going to start off with my uh, my uh, one bite here. Archie Comics continues to diversify their line. You know, they've got their traditional Archie books, yes. and then they have their Riverdale-associated content, and then they got the the rights to these Marvel reprints, which I love, and I know you're a big fan of now, too. I am too. a huge fan of them. Now they have this Dark Circle line, and it's got a, a book, uh, Mighty Crusaders, which is being solicited um, for a December release, which is a superhero book. But that's not even what I'm going to talk about. I'm actually talking about Cosmo number one. This is a new ongoing series, Space Aces. Cosmo is a Martian with the skills of a warrior and the heart of gold. He's the leader of his Mars unit, M-A-R-S unit, that explores Ooh. the solar system. Uh, what was meant to be a routine scouting mission turns into a much larger adventure. Cosmo and his friends stumble upon a panicked human and, an and they encounter some ferocious foes. Um, very cute, cartoony style. I think this is going to complement their line in a really big way. Uh, this is not uh, due to be released until 2018, uh, but it just looks really exciting. Bold colors, almost uh, it looks like chibi-esque proportions. So I'm really digging uh, the stuff that Archie uh, is putting out right now. They're just continuing to push and push and push, you know, between the Sabrina Mature Reader stuff the Marvel Digest. I have a couple people getting... just announced in this uh, preview the newest Digest. Yeah, the X-Men is... X-Men. X-Men Digest is going to be coming out in uh, in December. And you actually found out with uh, at the conclusion of your Thor trade. It's the last... Mm. I think uh, at the end of every one of those uh, Digests... It tells you what's They're going to tell you what the next subject matter is going to be, which is so pretty awesome. And they're, yeah, we'll watch, watch the Facebook the, feed people. Facebook it's that there. You can classic the... cover of the new X-Men team. Such fun, fun stuff. Yeah. So that's uh, that's my big comic news uh, contribution. Cosmo number one from Archie. And uh, I'm just like, once again, I'm really impressed with how they continue to, to kind of push the envelope. So, Tim, what do you got for us from DC? Well, DC has a new uh, superhero group coming out called the Immortal Men. Uh, it looks really interesting. I have a little description here. The end of Forever Part 1. There's a secret history to the DC universe of heroes who have protected humanity from the shadow since the dawn of time and who can live forever. Hence the immortal part. Yeah. Enter the Immortal Men. The team, headed by the Immortal Man, has waged a secret war against the House of Conquest for countless years, but Conquest has dealt a devastating blow. When their base of operations, known as the Campus, is savagely attacked, the immortal men must seek out their last hope in emerging metahuman known as Caden Park. Caden's emerging powers may be may be able to ensure the immortal men's survival, but will conquest get the get to him first? It looks uh. really cool, and I think they have like new heroes and stuff. Yeah, it does. Uh, look, it does look like new heroes. And take a look at this, Tim. There's a there's a, a graphic of here of how the front cover is going to fold out. This uh, is in the previews book that just came out for December. Yeah, the orders so, are going to be due tomorrow, kids. Yeah. So if you're going to turn in your orders, but it's going to have the cover is going to exist on the front and back, and then the front cover is going to fold up and down outward and out. to continue that artwork. Which is look at yep. how crazy that is. It's really nice artwork. Well, it's Jim Lee. So yeah. Is it Jim Lee doing that too? I would assume. Yeah, since he did it's the, him. Yep. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. You know, leave it to Jim Lee to do a massive gatefold cover. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. So that's that's coming out when, Tim? That's for December, right? December-ish, yes. I think, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's very cool. A lot of interesting looking characters. And then I know that you also, you had an eyeball on that, too. I did. Well, DC's doing this whole thing, and um, 
they're calling it the uh, the new age of DC heroes, where they're introducing new characters. And they all have oh, it. New storylines. And they all have it. And it looks like a bunch of their new stuff has that flap that we were talking Man, about. That gate gap. Look yeah. at that. Dan Abnett is is writing with uh, John Romita Jr. Silencer. Ooh. Ooh, jeez. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Good job, Tim. Yeah. Good Get some kid. good news there, kid. It's, it's good, good news, kid. Hey, hey. Way to go. Good stories. So, uh, in the world of Marvel, uh, the biggest Spider-Man and Deadpool story ever arrives in July 2018. There's the Deadpool. You I said there wasn't Deadpool. any Deadpool stuff. Not in the picks. Oh, my God. You didn't say it. I couldn't do it in this, the whole thing. Who's this Deadpool guy? Who's Deadpool guy? He needs some promotion. I should Deadpool check this guy. out. One of Marvel Comics' more unique pairings is undoubtedly the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and the Merc with the Mouth Deadpool. The duo finds itself at odds in Spider-Man Deadpool's opening arc for Marvel Legacy and the solicitation for the January issue teases the arrival in July of the hero's biggest story of all time. January's Spider-Man Deadpool number 26 is the fourth part of Spider-Man vs. Deadpool and acts as an interlude in which the story jumps to the future with both heroes are in their 80s and living in a nursing home. Oh my god. The, sp- the prospect of Spider-Man and Deadpool still together in their twilight years has all the makings of a chaotic sit- living situation. The promise of the biggest Spider-Man and Deadpool story of all time is sure to raise some eyebrows. Some possible outcomes of the rivalry could be a dissolution of their working relationship or the addition of a new dynamic that makes them more united than ever. With this being comics, the death of one of the characters can never be dismissed. <laughs> Although it occurring during a team-up comic instead of one of their solo series seems unlikely. So stay tuned for that in July. But that's preview coming. for it in January. That's So there's a preview for it in January? Yes. And the series starts in July? Yes. That's interesting. Yes. All right, so there's your three new three yeah. news bites from, from, from three big companies this time. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on out there in the comic world. There's more. News, which we'll talk about later on in the picks. You'll see some uh, new stuff from new books coming out as well. We've got uh, we've got uh, Christine, uh, who is the uh, host for the Horror News Network, watching on the live feed, and she said, "Grumpy old men for Marvel." Yes. Yep, that's their new uh, yes. their new demographic. Mar- Martin Landau and that's, Jack Lemmon. That's the odd star couple. Is that the odd couple? Spider Man. Yes. Is that the odd couple? It is the odd couple. So we'll be back with more. It's next up is my favorite part of the show, the convention report. But first. A little bit more news from the folks over at Free Lunch Comic Studios. It's a little bit of information about Thirsty Thursday. Ooh, Thirsty Thursday. And this is the third Thursday of the month, so does that mean... Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow's, tomorrow's D&D, 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 D&D night. So if you're into yeah. D&D and looking for somewhere to play it, we've Free got, Lunch Studios is the place to be. We've got three new players showing up tomorrow. Ooh. So here's a little bit more information about that. I'll be back in just a bit. It's Free Lunch Comic News. news, news. Hey, kid, hand me that story on Deadpool. Every Thursday night at Free Lunch Studios in Terrafield, Connecticut, we open the doors to our friends for drinking, gameplay, networking, and our favorite beverage. Come on by Free Lunch Studios in the Terrafield Mill for drink and draw, drink and game, or even drink and learn. Every Thursday night, 7 to 9.30, hosted by Matt Ryan. Come on down, freelunchcomics.com. Comic news back after that little break to talk of uh, talking about uh, Thirsty Thursday D and D tomorrow night. So if you want to check out some D and D, go over to Free Lunch Studios, seven till ten tomorrow night, located in Terrafield, Connecticut. Oh yes, at the mill in Terrafield. At the Terrafield, my when my my youngest, whenever she talks about my work, she's like, at the Terrafield Mill. She says it like an old man. At the Terrafield Mill. You know where my dad works? He works at the my Terrafield Mill. My dad works mill. over at the Terrafield Mill. He's worked there since he was a young boy. I don't know where she picked it up, but it's pretty awesome. I do, I do the old man voice all the do time. You she really? probably got it from me. That's Meanwhile, scary. at the Terrafield Mill. Claire thinks my old man voice is hilarious. Yeah. Let's hear it. I just did it. That was it? Yeah. She yeah. loves you very much. It's a, you're a crazy old man. All right. Anyways, it's time for the convention report, which has the best music in the history of podcasting. Hit it! Ooh. What? What? 
<laughs> a lot of conventions this weekend, You're folks. You're so old and white, man. It's true. <laughs> it is true. I'm not going to deny it. What? What? We're going to start off in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Mark, Fe. Mark Tarrant, this is kind of in your neighborhood. Santa Fe Comic Con at the Buffalo Thunder Resort and Casino. Oh, best name ever. I know. This is the sad week. This is the last time we're going to oh. talk about that show. No, we're not. I'm going to keep talking about Buffalo Thunder. We're going to make up a fake one. We're I want to make, a, a, I wanna make a comic book called Buffalo Thunder. It sounds good and bad. What? It'd be awesome. It sounds like uh, large mammals with gas. Anyway, Next this weekend, week Buffalo Thunder, <laughs> October 20th through the 22nd, Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's the Grand Rapids Comic Con at the DeVos Place Convention Center. Uh, October 22nd, tw- 21st and 22nd, right up in Boston, Massachusetts, is the Mass Independent Comics Expo, or MICE. Ooh. This is the uh, Independent Comics Forum. So all all ages show, really well done. Will there be a Matt Ryan appearance of that one? No. Oh. Uh, October 21st and Whoa. 22nd. Well, it, you know, I'd love to go up there, but Whoa. I can't go up there all the time. Whoa. Super Mega Fest. Ooh, same yeah, weekend. I was supposed to go to that, and I can't. Know. Marlboro, Mass. This is at the Best Western Royal Plaza Hotel and Trade Center. Yeah. That is this coming weekend. I know. Super Mega Fest. Don't be sad. October twenty second in Melbourne, Florida. It's the Melbourne. Do you want to talk about it? No. Kinda. You go. Yeah. You don't want to go, huh? What? You don't want to go, huh? To the wedding? Yeah. No, I'm. I can't wait to go to the wedding. What are you nuts? I can't wait to spend a day with my girlfriend at a wedding. It's gonna be great. We could we could take this show right off the rails. We could go <laughs> in a whole other direction. You better be careful. This is where your heckling gets in your way. You just, Doctor, man. you just opened a door. And the wrong door. Where's this right on? now, all my friends are laughing because <laughs> the filter is on. You are lucky. I would throw you so far into the bus. Oh, I know you, and that's why I love doing it right now. Because I know you can't get a, you can't do anything about it. Claire, are you out there somewhere? <laughs> She's gonna listen to this. I'm gonna hear about it anyways. All right, so Melbourne, Florida, October 22nd at the Melbourne Auditorium. Uh, next weekend, the 27th through the 29th in L.A. Stanley's L.A. Comic Con. Last the, one. Lost. <laughs> it's the last appearance. <laughs> That's terrible. It's your last chance. At the Los Angeles Convention Center. He'll never do anything ever again until next week, and then he'll come back for another one. It is a good marketing campaign. <laughs> it's, it's, it seems to be working for him. October 28th and 29th, Fort Wayne, Indiana. The Fantasticon Fort Wayne Ooh. at the Grand Wayne Convention Center. Grand Wayne. Grand Wayne. That's a cool name. Yep. And then... Uh, also o- that weekend. October 29th, Portland, Maine. It's the Portland Comic Expo. Ooh, Portland, and that's Maine. I love that town. At the Portland Exposition Building, and you've said you've been there a number of times. I have been. Also on the 29th of Our October. friends, uh, Scott Pellin and Greg Collagen, are going to be putting on the East of the River Comic Show at the Golden Gavel in uh, East Windsor, Connecticut. Yes. I like to call it the East River Comics and Collectibles Show. Yeah, it's such a nice show. Yeah. It's nice, and you can come and meet me and Mark. And yeah. Tim, Tim might be there. Yeah. Tim might be there, and Probably. you could get a lot of cheap comics. His mom lets him out of the house. His mom? Yeah, he's got a guy's permission. So it's a real it's nice a time, and it's the it's the Sunday before Halloween. My mom's retired. <laughs> She's home all the time now. She's like, get out of here, kid. Okay, November 1st through the 5th. Whoa, that's a long con. That is a long con. It's, it's, like called, <laughs> it's called Luca. It's a long con, as they say. Oh, for Pete's sake. Did you get the wrong thing? No, it man, in it's, in, it's in Italy. Oh, nice. <laughs> I made a comment this morning. There's no Canadian shows for me to check. You got on. one in Italy. And there's one in Italy. Nice. All right, so if you're going to be vacationing, oh, man. It, there's no other details. Uh, Why would there that. be? It's in Italy. I'll take, so, note. I'll any, take note of that. You're going to go? <laughs> yeah. Tim's going to go. Any of my friends in Italy. I'll we're gonna represent for you. We're going to send it with a special correspondent. But look at the dates. November 1st through the 5th. Well, that is Italy. a show. They're very laid back in Italy. All right. They gotta take. They gotta take like. Uh, don't they have to take like siestas or something? That's Mexico. I know. Yeah, I'm saying, like, whatever like... they call them in Mexico. Whatever they call them in Italy. All yeah. right, November fourth in Morgan, like Morgantown, lunches. North Carolina. They take smoke breaks. Yeah. It's the Morgan uh, Morganton. <laughs> Every hour, Comic-Con. everyone walks outside for a smoke. Goes back in afterwards. 
Why are, why are you stopping and oh, waving at me? Because somebody's talking to Tim. <laughs> Tim's getting more fan oh. mail. Talk to him if you're Facebook watching Live. on Facebook Live, oh. Tim's getting fan mail right now. Oh. So Morgan, Watch out now. Morgan did Comic Con. Watch out, girls. How come they don't heckle them during the classes? They gotta heckle them now. Because I'm working during the classes. Holy smokes. He's working now. Uh, the Colich Street Recreation Center. What is uh, this for? That's the Morganton, uh, North Carolina oh, okay. show on November 4th. Uh, November Morgantown f- or Morganton? Morganton. Oh. November 4th and 5th, Austin, Texas, MondoCon. Ooh. That's at the Marchesa Deep Hall. Deep in the heart of Texas. Theater. November 5th, Lutherville, Timonium, Maryland. Steve Canaris, this is for you. It's the comic book and non-sports card show at the Radisson Hotel, North Baltimore. That's Ooh. November 5th. Can we send them there as a special correspondent? I could try. Uh, November 5th, Daytona Beach, Florida. That's the one I want to go to. Mm-hmm. Dibs. Daytona Beach, uh, ICI Center. And that's uh, November 5th. November 5th again, Albany Comic and Toy Show at the Radisson Hotel Albany in Albany, New York. There might be a Matt and Mark appearance of that. Yeah. Show. Well, Mark was confused. He was like, what were we going to do there? I'm like, we're going to walk around and buy stuff. I thought stuff. we were working. I thought you had a booth. We are always working. We've never gone to a show together where we haven't had to work. Where's the formula? It's going to no, be weird. I don't November know what I'm do 10th myself. through the 12th, Durham, North Carolina. I'll walk around with books on me and just be like, buy this book. Gabby, this is for you. Durham, North Carolina, at the North, uh, the, we'll call it the NC Comic Con. It's at the Durham Convention Center. Mm. November 10th through the 12th, the Kansas City Comic Con. Guess where? Kansas City at the Kansas City Convention Center. Is that in Missouri or Kansas? Missouri. Okay. Thanks for asking. November 10th and 12th. We're going to talk about this for a minute. Providence, Rhode Island, the Rhode Island Comic Con. This is at the Rhode Island oh, Convention man. Center. This show is the New England Mecca. Dirty with celebrities. It's insane. Dirty with celebrities. It's ridiculous with celebrities. I. It's, it's, it's got hard. more celebrities, it's, I think, than any other to, con I've ever been to. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It's, it's. I remember when it was just a small little con. It still is a small little con. The building, <laughs> like, the, bu- the building does not grow. There's gonna be. I think there's gonna be more celebrities than there's going to be room for people to see them. How many days is it? It's two, two. days. Okay. It three. Is two days. Three. Or maybe three. three. I guess yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I guess they could space it out, but. But they have everyone's gonna I, be there. But a lot I, of guys are like Sunday only. A lot of people are Saturday only. Sure, absolutely. I yeah. mentioned to Matt. I think it's they're planning for cancellations. Well, they always pl- they always have a lot of cancellations. I yeah. That. So maybe they're booking as many people as they can and just. Like they had what's her face it. Scarlet Witch was gonna be there and she's already canceled. Mm. There you go. Uh, November 11th, Wheaton, Illinois. It's the du- du- DuPage Comic Con at the DuPage Wheaton's County Fair- Fairgrounds. No- November 12th, 11th and 12th, I'm sorry. Fantastic Con, Mount Clemens in Mount Clemens, Michigan at the Gibraltar Trade Center. Ooh, that's a cool name. November 12th in Frederick, Maryland. Shoff Promotions, Frederick, Maryland Comic Con. There you go, Steve Canaris, another one. Yeah, Clarion Inn, Frederick Event Center. Then November 18th, Fort Myers, Florida. It's the Southwest Florida Comic Con. It's at the yeah, Holiday can, Inn, Fort Myers Airport at We can send J- James Clore there. His parents got a place in Fort Myers. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Annandale, Virginia, November 18th, Shoff Promotions Comic Book and Non-Sports Card Show at the Annandale Fire Station. Ooh. Hey, our friend Tom is doing a show November 19th in New Haven, Connecticut. It's the New Haven Comic and Collectible Spectacular. I've been that. It's He's cool. done. He does those shows. He does, he not only does he get a, a diverse group of uh, uh, vendors, but he'll entertain you too. So he'll have people entertain. Little people. known fact for you kids out there listening to the show: that is the show that I met Matt at. Is that right? Yep. It's really? Cute. That's you're doing an art fight. I would. Oh yes. Art. And High Adventure was playing. They're very talented. They are. That's going to be the annex. And Brian and I are like, we need to go talk to that guy. Huh? And that's how we oh, met. Oh, it was his idea, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. So the, and that Tom Fury's show is going to be at the Annex YMA Club. Ooh, I don't know where that is, but it's mm. in New Haven, folks. Because we went, it was at North Haven, was it? He's headed a different, yeah, he's headed a different Was that a hotel in North Haven, the one we went to? He's done it at, like, Alliance Club 2, I think. It was at, like, a hotel or something. When we met, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Almost done here, kids. November 19th, Columbus, Ohio. It's the Buckeye Comic Con at the Courtyard Columbus West. November 25th and 26th, St. Charles, Illinois, the Chicago Pop Culture Con mm. at Pheasant, at the Pheasant Run Resort. 
That's November 25th and 26th. And our last show that I'll mention, November 26th, it's the Plainville VFW CliffsCon. CliffsCon. I I'll make my return to CliffsCon. Oh, you are? You're going to be there. I'll make my return. I have a very special event planned for that day. Okay. And I'm leaving it at that because I want to make Ooh. sure everything gets put in All a the nice row before. Teaser so, crossed and the eyes so are dotted. I'm just letting you guys know you're the first to find out. We are going to do something very cool. I'm going to do something very cool for the people that are there. He's going to go day. streaking. <clears throat> no more movies for you before the show. That's it. You're done. You're done. It's filling your streaking. heads with too much too He's much. Going nastiness. streaking. <clears throat> Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank. And we have Anne shouting out to us here. She's saying that Wizard World Austin is coming soon. Ooh. You know, they still do those? To your point, Ange, uh, I also heard that the New York Comic Con is thinking about doing a show in uh, Philadelphia. I heard that. I posted it on our page. And I'll tell you this, too. Too when, many cons. When I went on Thursday with Wally Sisniak, the owner and uh, top talent from uh, Twin Robots Comics, it was sold out Thursday at New York. That's so crazy. So I would say that we're a hiccup away from a Wednesday opening uh, for really? the New York Comic Con. I think crazy. so. I think so. Yep. Can they just find a bigger venue? In New York? Yeah. What would that be? I mean, at this point, why don't you just go to MSG? Is that bigger? Really? Convention floor-wise? Square footage-wise? Really? Uh, vendors? I don't know. It's got a hockey rink. I know that. I know it has a rink. I know how big rinks are. You're no, not going to be able to have... it's like six stories. Yeah? How many, yeah. How, many, how many arenas do they have in there? Like three. Is, it, is that true? Yeah. The hockey rink is on the sixth floor. Yeah, but would that give them the square footage to be able to run a show with the magnitude that they do with the Javits? Yeah, they have a whole like convention center underneath the hockey rink. They do? Yeah. I've never been in there. Really? Nope. Like the second person this week that has I've said something to about MSG and I had no idea that about the size of it. Well, I was I was kind of surprising. They were doing a big Rangers party when we were there. They should oh, do yeah. it like that. Because opening night was that week. It was yeah. around that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It was that day. Well, I think it, it like was that day. Yeah, that night, yeah. Opening night was that night, yeah. That do weekend. it like the Italian thing and just have it be like a full yeah. week of things. A four with a five day show. Yeah. Well I think that I think it's getting there. I mean you know, I San I wouldn't Diego Comic Con San Diego starts off. Was the name of that show it? Luca? It was Luca's something Freshissimo. Something. My name is Luca. Mozzarella. I live up on the second floor. Of the that's Madison Square Garden. Of Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Uh, All right, so that's it for my convention report. That's right. Not only do we cover the shows happening in America, we, we cover also, the shows internationally as well. And we also got a look into Mark's dark psyche when it comes to social events with his girlfriend. No, I'm excited to go to this wedding. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Let's get the camera on him. Let's see. It's going to be fun. I can't Let's wait. Let's see what the it's face looks like. It's going to be a blast. What does fun face look like? I can't, it's hard to it's see. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, I'd buy that for a dollar. I'd buy it for two. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with uh, the top ten. <laughs> The top ten? Yes. All right. Jeez, well, Louise. First off, no we're break a more. For me. You're putting everything on me in the middle. Yeah. Well, first off, we're gonna a little bit more about ClipsCon coming up in November. But don't forget, coming up at the end of this month, East River Comics and Collectibles Show over at the Golden Gavel in East Windsor, Connecticut. But we'll be back with more. It is free lunch, comic, news, news, news. <laughs> Cliff's Cons of Plainville, Connecticut. Looking for that hard to find comic or that really rare toy, or maybe you're just looking to save a couple bucks on your comic collection, come on down to the Plainville VFW almost every month of the year to enjoy one of the coolest comic shows around. Cliff's Cons of Plainville. Only 99 cents to get in, food, donuts, coffee, while supplies last. And we're back here in Free Lunch Comic News. After information there from our good friends at CliffsCon. Coming up in November, but again, don't forget, this month we have East River Comics and Collectibles Show happening at the Golden Gavel in East Windsor. It's uh, from 10 to 3 p.m., that show. 99 cent admission. 
Matt awesome. will be there. A lot of fun. The guys from Geekonomics will be there. I'm pretty sure there'll be more artists and tons and tons of comic books and toys to look through. Perfect place to pick up that Christmas gift that you can't seem to find anywhere else. Oh. East River Comics and Collectibles Show. But now it's time for the top 10. Where Matt gives us the top 10 books for the month of August 2017. Take it away, Matt. All right. Well, this is really cool. And uh, we've never broken format before, but I have to I have to do it for this one. I you know we've never, never broken, broken format home. for the top ten. Oh, number ninety eight. Wait till you number ninety eight. Wait till you hear what this is. Okay. The True Believers Kirby one hundredth anniversary, introducing the Mighty Thor number one. Ooh, that's pretty neat. That was a dollar book, kids, yeah. and that's in the top one hundred. Wow. That. Like, can we just, for Slow Jack clap. Kirby, for Jack Kirby, you know, I'm still a little sore about there not being a Fantastic Four one, Marvel. Well. But anyway, here we go. Number 10. Number 10. Star Wars number 35, Marvel. Number 9. Number 9. Star Wars number 34, Marvel. Number 8. Number 8. Generations, the Unworthy Thor and the Mighty Thor, Marvel. Number seven. Number seven. Secret Empire, number nine, Marvel. Number six. Number six. Secret Empire, number eight, Marvel. Number five. Number five. Generations, Wolverine and all new Wolverine, Marvel. Number four. Number four. Secret Empire, number 10, Marvel. And then the three number one books are all from DC. Number so it three. seemed a little weird for you, Tim. Things are coming back. Batman number 29. Number two. Number two. Batman number 28. And the number one book for August 2017. Number one is... Dark Knight's Metal from DC. Just going to rattle off the top ten selling graphic novels and trade paperbacks. Number ten. Number ten. X-Men Blue, Volume 1, Strangest from Marvel. Number mm, nine. Number nine. Old Guard Book 1, Opening Fire from Image. Number eight. Number eight. Superman Volume 3, Multiplicity, uh, DC. Number seven. Reborn, Hardcover, Image. Oh, I bought that one. Number six. X-Men Gold, Volume 1, Back to Basics, Marvel. Number five. Wonder Woman, Volume 3, The Truth, DC. Number four. Killer Be Killed, Volume 2, Image. Number three. God Country Trade, uh, Image. Number two. Batman, Volume 3, I Am Bane, DC. And the number one graphic novel slash paperback book thing, number one. This is going to make you very happy, Mark. Paper okay. Girls, Volume 3. Nice. Image. So there you have it, folks, nice. your top 10 graphic novels and trade paperbacks for the month of August 2017. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll be back with our picks after our this. Picks, yes. But first, a little news about Geekonomics. Two guys talking about nerd stuff and are super excited for the next couple months because we have a ton of cool things coming up. Thor, Justice League, Star Wars. We'll be talking about all that. And a whole lot more. Stranger Things. Monday show is it's all Stranger things. things. Oh yeah. Oh, is that right? Monday yes. is dedicated to yes. that show. Recap of season one, and a preview of season two. So Geekonomics coming to you Mondays on the podcast place you can get anywhere you want to get a podcast. Be back okay. with more in just a bit. It is free lunch comic news. Yes. That's it. With Mark and Brian, a weekly nerd podcast, talk about all sorts of stuff covering all of nerddom. Brian, what else? What is the main things we talk about on our show? List them off, Brian. Movies, Movies comics, comics, TV shows, TV shows, music, video music, games, video games, anything, big things every week, talking about big topics, big nerd stuff. It is Geekonomics! comic news back at it after that little blurb from our good friends over at geekonomics the place where all this all started geekonomics podcast talking about all things nerd 
New show Monday, all about Stranger Things. But now it's time for our picks, where we tell you about the books that we think you should check out when they are released. And these are coming out in December. December, right around the corner. So you can order them tomorrow is the last day to order these. So this is your last chance to hear about new books that will be coming out in the future. So take it away, Tim. Alrighty, my first pick. I talked about it earlier with the uh, comic news, but The Immortal Men. It looks really cool. By a, I don't know how to say his name, James Tinian, Tinian the Fourth. Oh, okay, yep. Fancy and art by Jim Lee, mm. Scott Williams. It's good stuff. Looks great. Mortal Man, very cool. All right, the next one I chose was Damage. I think this is one of the new characters they have coming out. He's kind of like the Hulk, where uh, it's about this guy who's part of the government experiment or something, and once a day, he for an hour just goes crazy and like berserk monster thing that just destroys a ton of stuff they describe him as a like a time bomb stronger than a nuclear warhead so it looks cool the art is great art by tony daniel everybody yep it's beautifully done and on one of the cover flaps here they have harley quinn looking all knocked out so it looks like they're doing some crossovers into other work It does look really, really good. It looks That'd good. That's going to be good. Yeah, that should be cool. And all the right. other one... Here, I'll go next. You go next? Yep. Well, I thought okay. we to do all of ours at once. You want to do them all at once? All yeah, right, yeah, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Well, Quick. We're not like pin it back and forth at the same time. This is going to thrill... Uh, this is going to thrill um, Jay. Okay. So go for it. Uh, I just discovered Hillbilly. Apparently, it's already been out. Uh, but I just found it. It looks really cool. It's kind of my style. Uh, the dark, but fun... Um, it's about a dude that has what they call the devil's cleaver. It looks really cool. I, I tried to go to the shop earlier and find it, but they didn't have it. Eric and Powell goodness. Yeah. Mm. They were saying that people keep calling asking if they have it and they just haven't had it. But, uh, yeah, it looks cool. looks fun. Check that out. Right. I don't think I'm those done, your, Matt. Those are your picks? Yeah. All right. Um, I will go for mine here. Got to jump further in here. Uh, my first pick is from IDW, Tales from the Age of the Cobra. Um, this is an advanced solicitation for January, and it's a 112-page uh, graphic novel, a captivating uh, and timeless tale of love, passion, and violence, ooh, and humor, in the spirit of 1001 Arabian Nights and Aladdin. Uh, it's got a very fun, cartoony style. Looks like great colors. Just looks really nice. And it's an import, too. It looks like it was originally originally published by Euro Comics. So looks really, really nice. IDW, 100, 112 pages. Um, only 25 bucks. So that's not too bad for a full-color graphic novel. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Uh, the next book I have got picked here is Rumble from Image. Um, I believe this is a returning series. This is Rumble Number One by John Arcudi and uh, Dave Rubin. Um, this is the Soul Without Pity storyline. Um, it's very cool uh, artwork. Yeah, the image supplement is trying to betray me here. There, take that back. Thank you, sir. Um, so Rumble Number One from Image looks really, really good to me. Um, next thing I have picked is the uh, Archie Comics uh, licensing Marvel Digest X-Men number one little trade paperback graphic novel. They reprint classic X-Men stuff. From the looks of the cover, they're going to do the uh, Krakatoa Island rescue mission with Cyclops and the brand new team. Mm. Can't wait to get uh, my hands on that. Mm. Um, this is cool. <laughs> SpongeBob number 75. Now... This is mostly done by uh, James Kochalka. Um, he's gonna do he's gonna do like the whole thing, and he's got like a chibi look to SpongeBob, you know. And they're talking about things like the Desert of Doom and the Volcano of Doom and Hypno Madness. So, this is the first of my weird uh, picks this month. Uh, just cutesy, uh, very kid friendly looking uh, work. So that's it's for the kids. It looks yeah. like a, a doodle book or something. Yeah, like a doodle yeah. book. Yeah. Like it's, it's a well, that's kind a of book his, anyone could draw. It's his like style. A, it's like my kind of drawing. It's very friendly. 
Friendly, friendly style. Yeah, that makes me think I could release a book like that. So it's called Epic Sponge Funnies. I think he's a regular feature in oh. SpongeBob, like with a one-page story, and they're giving him the whole book. Oh, nice. This next one, I have to say, I have a little bit of a bias. I'm friends with this guy. Um, Matt Smith, I'm giving you a push here. No, you're getting a phone call, man. Oh, decline. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> Spotlight, uh, this is a spotlighted book through Boom Studios. Jim Henson's Storyteller, Fairies, number one of four. Written and illustrated by my buddy Matt Smith. You may remember him from Barbarian Lord and Lake of Fire. This cat yeah. is good. This cat is really or good. from Doctor Who? No, not that oh, guy. Oh, oh, oh. That's, uh, no, but uh, he's got a very clean style. If you're a fan of Bone, uh, this is your guy. Yeah. And... Um, He's doing a Jim Henson-inspired story. So mm. you can't really go wrong on that one. No, I almost picked that. You did? Yeah. No kidding. All right. I, I thought you'd pick the Pizzeria Kamikaze above it. No, no. <laughs> so I was going to pick the various thing. The other, uh, bu- the, the Marvel book I picked, uh, the Marvel 2-in-1. I know a lot of people are excited about this because the Fantastic Four, you know, it seems to be an ongoing theme now Supposedly all of a sudden. Back or something. Yes, they should. They should. And you know what? They should have done that $1 book. Um, well, they don't own the rights to it. So. You know, they got Jimmy Chung drawing the book, Chip Zdarsky writing it. Like, you can't go wrong. There's a variant cover with Alex Ross. A lot of people are going to go nuts for that book. So there's my Marvel pick that, you know, oh, if you want to learn about a book that's coming out. Um, okay, this one's a little off the radar. Um, it's actually a two-parter, uh, Double Fine Action Comics, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, all the chores in this book were done by Scott Campbell. Does this look like... I got something to say about this. About what, this? <laughs> no, no, I have something good to say about this. Yeah, let's hear it. This, you might not know. Double Fine is a video game company. And is it Scott Campbell? I don't know. But He's renowned <laughs> for making video games such as Psychonauts, Bro- Broken Age, and Grim Fandango. Is that the guy? I, yeah. That would be him. He yeah. came on as art director for Psychonauts and Hell started yeah. drawing comics as a warming uh, morning warm-up. These comics were then uploaded to DoubleFine.com, and the world was made amazing. Well, this each book contains, it looks like, 300 strips. Oh, no, 300 in the first, 200 in the second. I, this looks like so much fun to me. Um, wow. They're an interesting size. It's 9 by 9. Um, is it going to be hardcover? I can't tell, but it's uh, they're 20 bucks each. Uh, 128 pages in the first volume, 120 in the second volume. If you were going to compare it to something, I would say like James Kachala's uh, SpongeBob. They look very, very fun. Oni is obviously getting behind this because throughout the solicitations here, you can see these little, you know, greebles walking around in different in other people's solicitations, which I think is really, really cool. So, those are my picks. So, Double Fine Action yeah. Comics. Uh, I'm shocked, Tim, as you've heard the of this. Double Fine, like Psychonauts, one of my like first favorite games. I. I'll tell you a bit about it later because we're not a video game podcast. We're a comic podcast. But it is a great art style, and uh, Double Fine is known for their interesting style. And uh, Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. There's a crossover. You, I so think there you go. I think Boom. you'll dig it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's I basically the same thing, really, if you think about it. Video games are just basically moving yeah. comic books. You interact with them. So did you know that he had a comic coming out? No, I know. So there you go. There Boom. You go. That's cool. That's why I we swim around Tim. in the back. Yeah. We scooped him. I sc- yeah. Swim around in the back of the yeah. book. You'll never know what you're going to find. So my first pick is... Oh, hang on. I don't mean oh, to cut oh, you off. Well, you did. But it's o- Oni Press. That's who's doing that oh, book okay. that we yeah. just talked yeah. about. Sorry. This is my first pick out of the Marvel area. It's uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Storms of Crate number one. Uh, this December, the soon-to-be thrilling Star Wars The Last Jedi rocks movie screens across the world, and the reverberations are felt all around the galaxy far, far away. First up, learn the secret of the mineral planet Crate. Long before it became a battleground between the Resistance and the First Order, Luke Skywalker and Leah Organa lead the rebellion there in search of a new home. From writers Ben Acker and Ben Blacker, Star Wars Join the Resistance, and artist Marco Cicchetto, Star Wars Shattered Empire, comes this backstory of this winter's biggest adventure. So it's 40 pages, one shot, Ooh. rated T, $4.99. I like 40-page comics. Yeah. For $4.99, that's not bad. $4.99, yeah, not, not terrible at all. A uh, book that I'm uh, uh, totally addicted to, Darth Vader number nine. As the threat of the Jedi continues to menace the fledgling Empire, Vader finds himself on the trail of, Je- of Jedi his master has commanded. 
him to keep alive. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. 32 pages, rated T, 399. Now delving into the big, big book of previews. We'll see what else I've come across. He's leaving the house of ideas and he's going into... The house of non-ideas. Detectives. Batman <laughs> type Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles num uh, 2, numbers 1 and 2, written by James Tyrion the Fourth. Hey, that's the same guy who wrote Tim's book. Yeah. Arts and covers by Freddie E. Williams the Second. Ooh. Variant covers by Kevin Eastman. He's always got his fingers in the Ninja Turtles. I think Freddie's pure digital with his ears. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, the team behind the Smash Hit crossover series is back to reunite the Dark Knight and the Heroes in the Half Shell when Donatello goes... This thing's bending here. Goes looking for a new mentor to help him improve his fighting skills. He opens a doorway to another reality, hoping to summon the turtle's one-time ally, Batman. But instead, he gets sent to Gotham City and someone else comes through the open portal. Ooh, Bane! Suddenly, there's a new gang, new gang boss in New York, and he's out to unite the other's bad guys under, under him. Have Can Donnie get back in time turtles? to bring Batman with him? To help his brothers before Bane causes inepparable destruction. Co-published by IDW. Number one's on sale December 6th. Number two's on sale December 20th. Each of 32 pages. Full color. $3.99. Rated T. I was going to say that's what uh, the last Batman, the last Dark Knight needed was uh, mutant turtles. Mm. Just in time. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you're powerful? Finally, find out what happens to Doc, Clara, and the whole family after the end of the third film of Back to the Future, Oi, da, part of IDW's da, da, da. Artist Edition cover month, Back to the Future Tales from the Time Train Number 1, written by Bob Gale and John Barber. I know a kid who's going to that. Artist Megan Levins. In, 19, in 1893, and at last, Doc Brown fulfills his promise to Clara as he has completed the project he's been working on, The Time Train. But where in time and space will the Brown family go on their inaugural trip? And what could possibly go wrong if if and when they get there? Lots! Join Gail Barber and Megan Levins as they kick off the newest Back to the Future series. Full color, 32 pages, $3.99. Marty! <laughs> Marty! <laughs> Great, Scott! Just in time to take out all those Rick and Morty people. It will be painful for you. <laughs> now this is a book I... I saw this big picture thing of it inside the previews. I was like, oh, that looks what cool. What is this? But I think this is something that's not something I would usually read, but I think other people that I know would be into. Ooh. An all ages, all new series from Jason Inman and Ashley Robinson with art by Ben Matsuya? Matsuya? Yeah. Oh, I can't see that far. Jupiter Jet number one. Ooh. Series launch. 16 year old Jacqueline Jackie Johnson rides the sky on an experimental jetpack, and she does what any other teenage girl would do. Steal from the rich and give to the poor. Oh. But when she steals a mysterious object from the wrong people, can she survive the robots and ray guns they send after her? So multiple covers, 32 pages, 3.99. Uh, new book coming out, so check it out. I think uh, a lot of people dig it. I really like this one cover here, which I know Matt would get. It's very to. fun artwork. Look at that. Oh, geez, is that Rockefort? Is that Kenny Rockefort? I don't have my glasses on. Myers. That's, uh, oh, is it John Boy Myers? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. I saw that and I was like, I'm going to talk about that. One of our friends who's watching on the live feed it just did a shout out for IDW First Strike. Uh, Gabe is chiming in saying he's mm. enjoying First Strike a lot. Yeah, so that's, that's all that, my picks. That's all your picks for the month? I think that's all of them. Good for you, man, picking a book a little deeper in the catalog. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Soon and of course, we're going to tell folks. And we're going to get you there. Listen to the listen to the, the, the live feed, you'll be able to see. Uh, I've got the new Thor Digest, Archie Digest. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, I think it's really cool. I flipped through a little bit. haven't had a chance to read it yet. But uh, all the stuff inside it looks really awesome. There's a whole bunch of... kind of spans the world of Thor like the other ones did as well. But I suggest if um, you're like like me and don't really have the time to go out and get like comic books every week and do all that kind of thing, grab these little guys. They're quick, easy. Matt's been talking about them. We've been promoting them like crazy. These things are pretty awesome. They've got the uh, like the first one was Spider-Man, second one was Avengers. Yep. Third one is Thor. Fourth one, we Matt talked about X-Men. Check those out, Archie Comics. They're great. They're like seven bucks. They're right? super awesome. You There's like toss, eight like, books like, in like there. Matt always says, you toss it in your back pocket. You find a place somewhere in a nice place to sit down and read, and you go through some old comic books and read through. 
the history of some of your favorite superheroes. Now, you said you got yours sent to you. Has, have either of you guys seen them in a grocery store yet? I've never seen them in a grocery no. store. I've been searching high and low in grocery I would stores. imagine that's going to be the target. I know Walmart's had them. Well, they've popped up in random places. I've never seen them inside. Like, I go to the grocery stores and the like, checkout lines where you usually see your Archies. I've been looking for them there. Have not seen them. So yeah, I haven't seen them that. That day. totally is something that like my mom or my grandmother would have bought me when I was a yeah, kid. Exactly. Oh my god! If yeah. they totally. just saw it yes. in line, they yeah. would totally it, yes. You know? And that's I think yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. And and for the historic comic fans, it covers different generations. Like they'll start with the origin, right? Or not yeah. the origin, but We're it's close to it. A story from its origin. So you're getting classic Kirby and Stan Lee in there. Then it jumps to Basema. And then it jumps to some of the newer generation stuff. It's, yeah. it's clean. It's good. Oh, I love it. It's also a good way just to like kind of like, well, from what hanging out with Matt and doing that kind of thing, it's a good way to kind of just see how comic books have like progressed from. It is very cool to, to see now. the it's evolution like the of it. Different in the way that, the realistic way yeah. of the drawing and everything. And well, just like looking at the edge of the book, forms. right? Yeah. And you can see. No, you can close yeah, it. They went you to... can see where it's full bleed print. Yeah. <laughs> to the old days where they had to honor yeah. the bleed. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. Yeah. I love it. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I want them to do. I want them to do Star Wars reprints that way. That was my. That was my thing. I was gonna bring up during this part, which I thought would be a good time to do it. Uh, what books would you want to see turned, switched from the Marvel? ID, IDW bought, has bought reprint rights to Star Wars. You know they're doing the kids stuff. Yes. And then they also do, and I don't know if you've ever seen these, and they've had a lot of success with these. They'll do these like pocket mini comics, and they've done it for Star Wars, yeah. Ninja Turtles, and My Little Pony. Mm. And these things sell like crazy, and they will reduce a full size comic to something a little smaller than that, yeah. but it's st saddle yeah. stitch print uh, staple. Yeah. It's not a digest. But they'll put stickers in there, and then they'll call it a poster. And it's just a folded piece of paper. Yeah. But it's got all this stuff in there. It's like four bucks, yeah. and you're getting these. But I'm books. saying in this in this Archie Digest way, they're doing these. I think everything Which Marvel has ever done. Ever, what do you think? What, what would be the one that you want to see done this way? Like I know your Fantastic Four kick has been going for a while now. <sighs> yeah. You think they would want to do a Fantastic Four one. I'm surprised Iron Man hasn't come up yet. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I'm sure they're, what they're doing nicely is they're timing them with the release of movies. Mm. You know, I think X Men is the first one, but there there's not a movie coming out somewhere near it. You know mm, what I'm saying? It's a show. Yeah, a lot of shows. As far as a digest, I'm going to speak selfishly. I think Dark Horse should do a Conan reprint one. I'm talking about Marvel. Well, you're Aquaman. talking about you're talking about Archie. Only Archie Marvel. Oh, ones. Archie what would you Marvel. See done in this, oh. this Star format? Wars. It's a no brainer. Yeah, there's tons of material. But they're making big dollars on it, so I don't think they would do that. Mm. Um, I go immediately to the like the bigger guys that I don't really pay much attention. Like, well, you'll know you're going to get a Black Panther one next spring. Black a Panther, Hulk, Hulk is Hulk a no-brainer. Cool. I think we'll get one. Soon. Doctor Strange, that would be a good one. Yeah. Deadpool. That's... Did you just say Deadpool? Yeah. No. no. Why not? Like, because because it's an Archie book that would never work. There's enough stories in the Deadpool universe that could flow in this. That are all ages? Not enough. Generationally? No, not enough. Because you gotta go like deep though. This is like this is like it goes all the way back to that's the beginning deep. of Marvel. So you yeah, have to like that's deep. Captain think America. About those characters. Captain America Captain on his America. own would be one. Yeah. Yeah. So Spider Man. Get away with the Nazi stories? No, it wouldn't be those. It would be uh, <laughs> it would be the. Can you get away with World War Two stories? You might get a you might get one or two. Like the like the bad uh, super Superman cartoons are back in the day that are. Very inappropriate to watch nowadays. Maybe some of the defenders, like uh, Iron Fist, maybe like be a good Luke with Cage, that. something Luke like Cage that. and Luke Iron Cage. Fist, Daredevil. They did have in all ages. It was Heroes for Hire, right? Yeah. When mm -hmm. they teamed them up. Is there enough material for that? How long can these go? You can go for. A long I don't know long. how long their arrangement is, but I know yeah. that I think they release every other month. Uh, can I borrow? Can I see? Yes. I think they say in the in the fine print. I believe, oh God, six times a year. I hope this works. Um, well, they're three in, and they've all been very popular, so I don't see why they wouldn't keep going. A Guardians of the Galaxy, could yeah. they do it? Would it work? I don't Is know. It old enough. You said they already did Spider-Man? They Spider did. Spider-Man Spider was, was the first one. one. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man then. That seems like a no-brainer. But then the thing is I always notice on these, and I have brought I've, like, had brought this up to Matt before, it says first issue starring Thor. Yes. So oh. they're going to so revisit. They're going to go back and say they're going second to revisit. issue starring yep. Spider-Man. They are going to revisit. Second issue starring the Avengers. You know, so there's always that kind of thing, too. 
We've well, got we've got Ange here, our friend from the internet here. Yes, she's recommending our number one fan, "The Battle of Blood and Ink" by Jared Axelrod and Steve Walker. Mm. All right, so Ange, I know the timing might be off on this, but we'll ask who's publishing that. And she was also telling us about the book uh, for women. F-O-U-R. Well, she knew about it. Yeah, yeah. That is out there as a graphic novel, which yeah. the, the she was getting the floppies. Was very interesting. Yeah. So we should also say check that out as well. Ange is our Ange is our our flagship uh, number one listener. Fan. Number one fan. Yeah, I'm going with it. So I but think the last for the picks. Yeah. So do we have a commercial we have to do? We got and then Twin Peaks unwrapped. We're gonna talk about those guys and then. Do we want to run Twin Peaks unwrapped and then do the last? Then we do free lunch menu. We're gonna end the and show then with we're that. We're gonna end the show. Okay. All cool. the stuff going on at Free Lunch Studios, coming up in the relatively near future. Yes. But right now, here's a little. Uh, blurb about the guys over at Twin Peaks Unwrapped that do a show about everything Twin Peaks. Matt loves it. He listens to it as he runs. It is true. Stick and listen to that and we'll be back in just a little bit with more The Free Lunch Comic News. This is The Well. Twin Peaks Unwrapped, hosted by Ben and Brian. If you love Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks The Return, Fire Walk With Me, or anything uh, that originates from the dark and twisted mind of David Lynch, you will love Twin Peaks Unwrapped, a weekly podcast show that usually airs on Wednesdays. This week it was a little early. Uh, that reviews current Twin Peak episodes and past projects, including their books, fan magazines, actors, uh, producers, you name it. Twin Peaks Unwrapped. You can find it on iTunes, Podbean, and Facebook. That is Twin Peaks Unwrapped, my favorite podcast program, hosted by Ben and Brian. Comic news back at it with it's time for the free lunch comic menu where we hear everything that's going on in the world of free lunch studios. Take it away, Matthew. All right. Well, um, this is a crazy time for us at free lunch. Um, I'm going to skip right ahead to well, tomorrow night we've got the drink and draw, which is yes. the Dungeons and Dragons drink and draw, which Hosted is by very, the very Chris fun. Vasekis. Yep. And we, we have a good time. Tim just played his first time. True. And it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. It's it's cool. It's very cool. And this time I'll have my own character. Yeah. That'll and be fun. everybody sits yeah. around, they have such a good time. It's you know, you do this D and D thing all the time. D and D is pretty cool. Um fast forward to next week. Um we have uh on the twenty sixth, so next Thursday. We return to the drink and draw concept. We're going to do the adult King of Monster Mountain tournament. That's going to be Ooh. Thursday night, the 26th. The 27th at free lunch, we're having another open uh, drawing and painting for teens class. We just had one for uh, D&D, which was a lot of fun. We mm. did D&D character design, and then we played a little bit of D&D, and then we did a D&D uh, miniature painting thing. Yes, we're out of the water. Um, so <laughs> this time on the 27th, it's zombie night, which will be very fun. It's going to start at 4 o'clock and it'll run till 9. I'm going to teach uh, the students how to draw severed body parts and stuff. We'll eat some pizza. We'll watch a zombie movie. It's going to be a lot of fun. Brian's it, been speaking to you as we speak. I know. It's great. He totally <laughs> caught what I was doing in the last segment. Uh, so uh, if you want to vote on what movie we watch, you can actually go to the Free Lunch Studio Facebook page and vote for you know, we did a, a poll to figure out what popular zombie movies there are, and now we're picking which one we're going to watch. I even voted. I'm not even going. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, so that's the 27th. The 28th is the King of Monster Mountain uh, uh, Children's Tournament. That starts at 10 o'clock, and it'll run till 1. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Basically, if you've never heard of King of Monster Mountain, I actually have a comic book uh, game. Mm. It, the, the game exists inside the comic. It comes with a vinyl game board and little game pieces, but you design a monster and you send it into battle and they fight each other. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Tim is 
totally aware of this. He's been uh, mm. helping me with some King of Monster Mountain stuff in the office. So that's October 28th. I am also well aware because I sell it like crazy. Yes, you do. When, and there's none left. So I actually nice. have to order new game boards. Yes. Um, the 29th. I is like the East of the River Comic Show, and all of us will be together again at yes. the Golden Gavel. We talked about that earlier in the show. The 30th is the Monday Night, uh, the Monday Night Jam right before Halloween. Uh, we do the annual Candy Swap Jam, which is a Halloween lot of fun. Spooktacular. Oh, my God. It's great. Kids bring candy, and they can trade bid with other participants, and you can actually mm. leave with a real... Uh, diverse supply of candy. It's, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Uh, your sister is one of the people I let come to the kids' jam because she kind of understands it. And yeah. She has a very deep understanding of how it works, and she's yes. she's become the kingpin of candy during is, the annual is, Monday Night Jam. She is just, I think that's her shtick everywhere, not even just She's there. an awesome lady. I, she's I mean, kind of the kingpin of candy. She, she, she invited me to a murder mystery dinner last weekend, yes. and I took the wife, and it was so much fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And, you know, it was good food, uh, great times. Um, so that's uh, the, the Monday Night Jam candy swap. And, you know, you can wear your costumes. That applies to the Adult Jam, too. You know, we're all going to be wearing our costumes that night. Um, the following weekend, November 4th, is um, the Writers Con in, uh, well, it's a Writers Forum in at the Bethany Library. I will be at that, and I think your sister's going to that, too. Okay. Um, but that is a, uh, a writer's forum. Uh, they'll touch base on, you know, the medium, medium that we're here celebrating, plus, you know, for prose books and other mm, and articles and yeah. what have you. So I'm very excited about that. And then um, my last thing that I'm going to talk about is um, this weekend I'm lecturing at the Guilford Library. Um, they're having a comic celebration uh, Saturday. Tim is going to actually be in the Weathersfield Library on the 28th. He's running the art fight. Wow. Yeah, so. and he'll have some free lunch stuff. And wow. Yep. Some big boy thing. Letting yeah. someone do the art fight without you? I know we're 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 well wow. he he came to with me and supported me at Camp Anime. I know. Well I was at While you East were at the Field. other thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like it's funny, like I got so, to like, see stuff. you guys today yeah. together. So we're like all over the place. Meanwhile, I was stuck in traffic hell. Yes, because you went the wrong way. I totally went the wrong way. <laughs> um but well, what's this uh thing in Brickfield going on. Oh, that's just like the, the queen pin of candy. Oh, I like that. Ooh. Oh, your mom is smart. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's it. I think that's everything uh, in, the, in the next couple weeks. You know, we're going to keep doing the Monday Night Jams. We're going to keep doing the, the Wednesday Night Comic and Manga Club is in full swing. And uh, we'll be meeting later today. And the Drawing and Painting for Teens class is still going strong. And, and like I said, that Zombie Night is a Drawing and Painting for Teens class that's basically open to the public. So people mm. can come in without the commitment. So if they want to see what it's all about, this is a great way to test. And obviously it's you know, twice as long as the normal class. Usually it'll go from 4 to 6.30 every week, but because of it, it's a special night. So we'll do zombies this month. I think next month is superheroes. And then uh, December we're doing the Star Wars one, which is a lot of fun. The Star Wars one, we have a... I have a... Um, you know the Star Wars tabletop role-play game? Yeah. I actually have custom pieces that I made um, so that you can have a squad of stormtroopers go out versus a squad of battle droids versus squad of rebel soldiers and stuff so i like did custom game pieces for that so you can actually play plastic you know really nice really sharp uh, Uh, looking stuff yep people see it and they're like this you made these yeah man i made these yeah man yeah man they're cool i'm cool the force is strong (laughs) (laughs) ever since you said bane i can't disconnect with that Bane's just crossing over. You want me to go to the water? Go to the water? Go to the water? I don't want to go to the water. That's it for the free lunch stuff. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. It was a nice way to end it with your Bane impression. Yes. It was fun. Yeah. I'm still stuck in the Buffalo Thunder thing in my head trying to come up with an idea God. how to make that into a comic book. It, could, it would be. A, it does sound like it's a good Western sounding theme. Yeah. Buffalo Thunder. Buffalo Thunder. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah you got that's me all I think about. A Western, a Western book, a of gaseous a, Western where they eat beans no, and they heat the a, old West. That's a guy in the West, yeah. old, old deep West story. You ever hear that breeze from over yonder hill? Uh-huh. I can already picture it. The guy, like an good. old guy, sitting on the front porch, <laughs> that was a good talking about, thank you, talking thank about you. like used to hear the buffalo thunder rolling yeah. in, and it was the buffalo herds rolling over the hills. Look at that! There's a tumbleweed and. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. It might be my first thing. We'll see what happens. Oh, maybe the new shuffle will be a Western. Ooh, don't tease. I would be all about that. Are you really into that stuff? I'm Western? deep in the Western stuff. Well, Western's cool. Well, I got a story for you. But. Buffalo Thunder and Gunpowder Lightning from Mark Lewis on the uh, Facebook feed. Very Ooh. nice, Mark. Very, very nice. It sounds like a Western superheroes. Mark Lewis, big shout out to you. Uh, you know what? I just picked up with the Adam Warlock uh, reprints. Gil Kane. I know you're a huge, <laughs> huge Gil Kane fan. Western of farts. <laughs> yeah, Ange, thank you. Yes, thank you, Ange. Yes, so and thank you, everyone. For thank you, everyone. In. That'll do it for this uh, week's edition of the Free Lunch Comic News. You can find the uh, the news on the Free Lunch New Free Lunch Comic News Facebook page. Yes, also on our Podbean page, where you, you can also check out Dungeon Genetics and Geekonomics as well, all under the Geekonomics Podcast family. And we'll share it on the Free Lunch Studios Facebook page. We will. And of course, if you are wanting to see us in person, we will be at the East of the River Comics and Collectibles show on October 28th from 10 to 3. We'll be there. Or if you're in the New York area in November, Matt and I are going to go check out Albany Comic Con the first time where we won't be actually working. So it'll be interesting to see us out from behind a table and out wandering around. We actually do that. We actually are able to check out things this time for once. It'll be interesting. Great seeing our friends on the Facebook feed. Yes. And then another thing I learned, how to strip these live videos from Facebook. And we're actually up on YouTube on the Free Lunch Studio YouTube page. Well, there you go. So check that out as well. Yeah, there you have All it. that and a whole lot more Woo! interesting things coming down the road at Free Lunch Studios. Stay tuned here for all that and more. Free Lunch is Comics. Free Lunch com. Comic News. See you all next time. Bye, everybody. Say bye, Tim. Bye. 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 Play us out.